tonight's webinar of uh, Grandmaster Arthur Snakesons. We are going to start in two minutes. So uh, be yeah. ready. Hello. Hello, everyone. Glad that you're here. Uh, there's somebody. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Wenzel is asking, are you in San Francisco? Big Grigor. Uh, it feels nice. <laughs> okay. I'm definitely not, uh, not making this lecture from the space station, if you're wondering. So, if Grigor is in San Francisco. <clears throat> so, uh, before starting uh, the event, um, I just uh, want to say a few words uh, about uh, the webinar. Uh, this will be a preparation for our Italian camp, uh, which will take pl place uh, next week, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, Grandmaster Nixons uh, will share his Italian experience, and basically he will uh, provide an Italian repertoire for whites. Uh, those of you uh, who are going to uh, participate uh, in the camp next week uh, will get also the PGM version of his uh, lecture, but uh, in all the participants uh, will have access uh, to the recordings uh, which uh, will be available uh, tomorrow. So uh, now uh, I, I, wish, I wish you good luck and uh, Arthur, you can start. Okay, thank you, Grigor, for the introduction. Uh, first, let me start that um, you can, of course, ask freely questions in the chat uh, during the um, uh, webinar. And uh, if, I, if I can answer them during the webinar, then I'll, uh, then I'll do that. But if not, I'll try to attend them after the uh, webinar, after the theoretical part, and uh, try to answer them. So about the... Uh, 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 camp. I hope you are seeing my screen right now. So uh, it's going to start next weekend, as Grigor already explained. It's not only for white, it's also for black. Uh, what I'm going to do tonight is a basic repertoire for white, not for black, but hopefully also those who are considering this to play with black also will uh, learn something. And uh, of course, these are extremely experienced, world-class coaches. Uh, so I'm honored to have an introduction to the, to the camp. And um, in total, the camp will be nine hours, as you can see in the description. Uh, they'll talk about uh, the typical structures, about the pawn structures, uh, tactical ideas, and um, yeah, uh, pretty much uh, up, to, up to the date, the most modern repertoire for white. I know that uh, Boris Avrok already did um, uh, a database for modern chess uh, for black though, but this is gonna be for white and black. Yeah, and so the platform is Zoom next weekend. I'm not gonna be there, so I'm gonna be only here. And um, yeah, so you can check it out. And also I find it quite great that there's gonna be this uh, extra voucher of 35 euros to be spent on, on, on the products uh, of modern chess. Right, so let me, uh, perhaps now I'm gonna switch off the share screen and I'll make a share screen of, um, of this uh, lesson I want to tell you, this webinar, just a second, just a second, let, let me try to do that. Okay, here we go, here we go. I hope you can see uh, just fine. So what about the Italian? So Italian opening, Italian game, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and the bishop c4. From my personal experience, why I started to play this myself? Uh, because this was pretty much one of the uh, very first openings my chess coach teached me. So the idea is extremely simple. You want to develop the pieces. You want to play bishop c4. You want to play short castle. You want to play either c3, d4, or just play... Ah, how do you remove the arrows? Just a second. I'm not so sure how to remove the arrows. Is there? You yeah, can uh, just make a random click on the board. Ah, random click. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is the typical idea uh, to normally develop the pieces. But when I started to play chess, uh, the reason why I didn't really want to play bishop b5 is I thought it's more thoroughly explored and there is a much bigger theory. 
But in reality, why uh, Italian uh, game is getting much, much more popularity, I guess you already know the answer. This is the Berlin. Yeah, so after Bishop B5, Knight F6, the Berlin system, which was at the highest level pretty much introduced in year 2000 by Vladimir Kramnik against his world championship match against Gary Kasparov. You already pretty much well know the history that Kasparov uh, suffered um, sort of unexpected defeat by the hands of Kramnik. And um, he was trying to break hard uh, the entire match through the Berlin's um, system, but he failed. So the main line is short castle, 94, d4, 96, uh, takes, takes, d takes, 95. Oh, here we go. This is very big theory, very big theory. And when I started to play chess, I didn't like this. I didn't like right after the opening, I'm forced to go into an end game, and then I have to show um, a positional finesse in the end game immediately. I want to get the game. And that is the reason why knight of six, I, I started to play anti-Berlin setups with d3, Bishop c5, black plays something like d6 or knight e4. There are many plans. And then at some moment I realized, I mean, why I'm doing this? Why I'm playing the Ryle Lopez just to play anti-Berlin? Uh, so I decided I need to play more Italian because in Italian there is no Berlin. So it's as simple as that. And I think it's extremely important if you are going to play um, uh, Italian game that you have some basic knowledge also about the Ryan Lopez because Ryan Lopez and Italian game, I would say they're like brothers or sisters, I mean, whatever you call it. And um, many of the ideas, they share the same ideas, same setups, they're obviously nuances, and I imagine everybody who has played his fair share of uh, Ryan Lopez probably has played Italian and vice versa. Okay, so that was the little, little introduction why I started to do this. Um, so let's let's have a look at Bishop C4. So after Bishop C4, there's obviously many setups for Black. So I'll try to um, very briefly explain each of them. Uh, just to give you our introduction, there is Knight of Six, which allows the eternal Knight G5, Knight G5, D5, etc. But Knight of Six. You can calmly respond with d3, and after bishop e7, we are going to head over to the Italian-Hungarian variation, which is not really dangerous. Black is slightly cramped. I'm going to talk you uh, how to play it properly. Um, the most played line is bishop c5. Uh, and after bishop c5, so here, there's a number of moves how you can play this out. I... When, when you would open, for example, any chess uh, software which collects the games, for example, chess space, you would see that pretty much the vast majority, everybody plays here, C3. Now, this is completely a uh, normal response. C3, knight of six, and for some reason, D3. Yeah, so the, so the reason why white here plays C3 is that after knight of six, he's willing to play D4. So after d4, e takes. The idea here is to play e5. It has some resemblance, uh, resemblance to the uh, scotch gambit. Black plays d5. Otherwise, knight e4 is a problem. Yeah, knight e4 is a big mistake because you just play bishop d5. And this knight is in, in trouble. So something like a5 already has to be played. It's not good. So this is why after this e5, there is a d5. This in general is bad. Yeah, this is a bad move because here, here, I really don't remember. I think it was something like here or maybe a check on E to first. Yeah, and uh, black is just getting an excellent game. So this is why after E5, D5, white typically plays either bishop E2 or bishop B5. Never really pay too much attention on that, what is uh, uh, more precise. So let's assume, uh, just a second, yeah, bishop B5. Knight e4, c takes, and again here black has a number of options. Is it either to play bishop b4 or bishop b6 and just get a normal game? So when I'm playing with black, I would just play it like this, something like, instead of the, going for very big theory, something like bishop b6, white plays uh, 
let's say knight c3 short castle um yeah i already forgotten the main line ticket was here here and black plays f6 so this is how i would play typically with with black if i don't want really to um start a big theoretical struggle and uh, we are going to talk about this um position more in the final minutes of the of the webinar because you might have seen recently there was a game between um, Daniil Dubov against Sergei Karyakin in the final round of Russian Super Final where Daniil Dubov unleashed a spectacular B4. So very shortly I would like to mention this uh, so that you might consider to include this in your repertoire because I think it's extremely interesting. Yeah, I spent a little time to analyze this and compare this with the main lines of why this B4 makes such a big difference. Uh, right, so instead of this, uh, so again, D4, E takes, E5, D5, typically black is doing good. And as far as I'm concerned, from a professional's a point of view, this is sort of not dangerous for black. I think black is standing very good here, so the reputation is very good for black. Although uh, some people still frequently play this at the highest level even with white but usually it comes as a surprise so he prepares some kind of a new new setup so normally here white plays d3 and this is exactly the reason why c3 and then d3 makes almost no sense for white i mean it's slightly more complicated than that because if white plays c3 and d3 he has certain options available to him, which are linked with this idea to early transfer the knight to g3. So that is one of the opportunities which I've used a lot of times. But first, let me uh, show you the basic idea. And uh, among the professionals, I believe it's already the belief that short castle here is the most precise move. Uh, just a second, let me check. Yeah, I'll try to um attend the questions as well uh wesley so played c3 d4 e5 okay i mean i probably my analysis is not as great as wesley so he's one of the leading players in the world so i would really argue about that i guess it's it's a matter of taste really so i'm pretty sure he has some serious analysis to back uh the c3 d4 e5 Right, but I mean, I'm speaking from the general perspective. Most of the people still play C3, D3 or play short castle first. But first, let me show you the basic setup, which already is titled as old setup. So after C3, knight of six, D3. Let's, let's presume we are playing D3, A6. Yeah, so this idea uh, right now is already considered to be quite old because black is uh, freeing the a7 square for the bishop. And then he is thinking maybe he's gonna play d5 or d6. Most of the time he is playing d6. So after a6, here it's uh, really tricky. And this is actually one of the reasons why I really like Italian game, because you can improvise. It's so difficult to prepare specifically against the Italian game because you can play it out in million order of the moves. You can start with, for example, h3. You can play short castle without including c3. You can try to play knight bd2, knight f1, knight g3 without short castling. You can try to uh, spare a tempo on h3. Yeah, this is something I'm also going to talk about. And then try to trick black and at the right time, probably you're going to play d4 anyway because you want to fight for the uh, space advantage in the center. So the fact that white has played here d3, it doesn't mean that d4 is not in the cards. The reason exactly, again, why we don't play d4, at least I'm not recommending this, but again, if you find it interesting, <laughs> nobody is stopping you, is this, again, this line. So if Wesley says this, is, says this is great, I mean, I'm not, not going to argue. It is a good line. It's just uh, most of the people are not using very, few, very, very frequently. So after d3, uh, sorry, yeah, d3, a6, knight bd2, typically the knight goes on d2, d6, and this is the so-called, yet again, the old line. And after d6, 
One of the biggest threats by Black, which you already have to understand, if you have some basic knowledge in the Ray Lopez, you already know this, Black is threatening to play at some moment, 95. So this bishop is quite paramount. There's also this saying that in, in the um, Ray Lopez, the light square bishop is the soul of the Ray Lopez. And in Italian, it's very, uh, very similar. So this bishop is one of the important pieces in White's arsenal. And uh, it's not really so simple for black to trade it because it would double the pawn structure. We're going to talk about that as well. So knight a5 is the obvious threat. So bishop b3 is the old move. After bishop e3, here, knight f1 is one of the... Uh, just a second. Oh, just a second. What I'm showing you here. I think I'm showing you the wrong file. <laughs> okay, I mean, wanted, wanted to show you another file I started in another game. <laughs> this is my game against Lawrence Trent. Sorry about that. Uh, yes. So I already immediately jumped to knight f1 and knight g3 setups. Okay, so I'll start with this one. Uh, I intended to start with the first file. I started with uh, not the first file. So after knight of one, this is one of those uh, tricky ideas that white wants to play knight g3. And you have to be sure that knight g4 is not working. Yeah, because after knight g4, this is not something you want to do. So there's just nothing. Takes, 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 and probably black just plays bishop e6. And um, you might try to challenge this pawn on e6 and b7, but it's always easily defended by queen c8. So this queen b3 very rarely gives you anything. So after knight g4, you have to make sure that d4 works. So d4 and make sure not, you're not missing any tactics. You have actually I've caught myself to this thought number of times in my games. For example, takes, takes, um, for example, takes, takes, and queen of six. So I don't think it works because there's bishop e3 and the entire idea doesn't work. Sometimes, it very rarely it works, but most of the time it doesn't. Still, when you're playing knight f1, you are watching at this idea and making sure it, it doesn't really work. So knight f1, h6. Yeah, about the h6, it's again a very huge topic. Should black play h6 and not? And I think the vast majority is playing h6 just for the sake of some peace. Because as soon as black is playing short castle, it's so easy to mix up for black what happens after bishop g5. It's always the big question, can black play g5 or he cannot? Big question, because there's maybe not for the knight of one. But there's always this idea to sacrifice the piece for two pawns. Typically, white is already casted short, and this pin can be deadly. Yeah, here, apparently, I don't think it really works because I can just take, take, and knight e4. Yeah, very quickly, I just show you this here probably doesn't work with the knight and f1. In other situations, maybe black is not so lucky. So this is why for some piece, black normally plays h just to avoid this. And I would say it either takes a very brave person to make a short castle and allow bishop g5 when the center is closed, or this is somebody who knows what, who he, what, what is he doing. So knight g3, castle, castle. And again, when I'm playing this position from the white's perspective, I'm thinking how to save some tempos. So I'm trying this from the white's perspective. My plan is to play h3 and d4. I want to save tempo for h3. And typically something like bishop g4, h3, bishop f3, that's very bad. That's very bad because this bishop is extremely important. Now white can simply go and checkmate black at the king side. Also, I would like to mention that one of the mistakes, a position mistakes, I'm not sure if other theoreticians will agree with me, is positioning the bishop on g4. In Italian opening, and I think it's also fair to say in Raul Lopez, the bishop on g4 almost always is badly placed. So the reason is h3, bishop h5, and should it be either knight g3 or g4? Maybe right away g4. g4, bishop g6, knight g3. I can even make a short castle. Hide the king to g2, 
and either h4, h5, or maybe knight h4, knight f5, this bishop on g6 is extremely bad. And black is not having really easy time to make a break from the center. So that's, I think, a common understanding of a good player. He knows that the bishop on g4 has nothing to do. And instead, he either tries to position the bishop on e6 or try to do something else. Okay, I'll, I'll switch over to this first line, which I wanted to show you. Otherwise, I already skipped with something else. Um, yeah, again, let me go back to this uh, knight of three, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is why I was surprised why this line started with c3, because I was going to recommend to start with short castle. So short castle, knight of six, d3. Um, here, it's all about if black wants to play d5 or not. Uh, immediately d5, I don't think that's possible. Yeah, d5 is just bad. Yeah, d5, e takes, knight d5, it's extremely active, but this pawn is under attack. And one of the most important uh, strikes in the center, I'm not sure if it's going to work now, after f6, probably you can play c3, d4, but I wanted to show this move. So this move, d4, very often is causing quite a lot of headaches for black. Yeah, because here knight d4 just loses uh, material. So this is just bad. So after e takes, knight e5, rook e1, short castle, occasionally there might be a sacrifice of the pawn on e5, because after knight e5, rook e5, seemingly there is bishop f2, with the idea to play queen f6. But here specifically, also the knight is hanging on d5. So this idea, uh, how black might indirectly defend the pawn on e5, it is quite a common idea, so you need to watch out. So for example, again, rook e1, it doesn't work here. Short castle, knight e5, this is just bad, because again, black is just voluntarily giving, giving away two light pieces for the rook. Okay, let me again go back to the normal a6 lines. So d6, c3, and again, so c3 is defending against knight a5. So we want to make sure we are not losing the bishop. So c3, knight a5, we are happy to play bishop b5. Bishop b5, bishop a4, bishop c2, we are not going to trade this bishop for the knight. So after c3, maybe I'm thinking about d4 at some time, but most of the time I'm not ready to play d4 if I'm white. Um, yeah, so if black plays short castle again, this is one of those moments, one of those moments when black can already play, okay, rook e1, yeah, it is possible, but black has to understand what is happening after bishop g5. Bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, and again, the eternal question, if I'm playing with black, I have to know this, because one slightest mistake, I'm losing. I think there was this famous game um, Magnus Carlsen against uh, Sergei Karyakin, wasn't it? One of the classical games, uh, I think so, it was a classical game some years ago where Karyakin just mixed up some more of the moves with black, and that's it, he was dead lost after the opening. He just mixed up a couple of moves, and after g5, apparently, immediately, white got a crushing position. So, yeah, some ideas as king h1, f4, uh, appear on the horizon. Yeah, black plays typically bishop e6, queen e7, king g7, somehow the rook, uh, tries to you know, get rid of this bishop. But I'm not going to talk about that too much, about bishop g5 lines. And uh, so it's all about can black play g5 or not. Although I would like to mention from uh, very briefly that white can play bishop g3, bishop g3, and then there's just a um, very um, a tense struggle White is probably thinking about some d4. And there is a nice trick which you might remember from white's and black perspective. One of the most popular and aggressive ideas is to play g4. So g4, the idea is to position the knight on h5, queen g5, and start a big offensive. Okay, maybe I need to include some a6, bishop a7 first, but this is the idea. And typically g4, this already means that black is ready also to make a draw because there's this very nice shot, bishop h4. And this is something which you should try to remember that sometimes you can just finish the game just like that. So, bishop h4, you have to take the 
a piece. King g7, queen g3, king h7, queen f3. That's a draw. Yeah, none of the sides can continue. And uh, this is ending with a draw. Anyway, I don't want to advocate too much on bishop g5 because, again, for me, it's not exactly 100% clear at which moments this h6 g5 it works or not. Maybe with the a4 it works, without a4 it doesn't. With the knight on d2 it works, with knight, without the knight on d2 it doesn't. The knight goes to a3, it's a different setup. Like I said, no wonder that Karyakin mixed it up. And uh, I just try to avoid myself playing bishop g5, so I just play something like rook e1. Rook e1 with the idea I'm, I'm thinking about to play d4. Rook e1, and let's say black again is thinking about knight g4. Knight g4, I just play d4. That's no big deal. h3, go back. Again, I think I already mentioned that bishop g4 is not so good. h3, bishop h5. This bishop has nothing to do there. And just play something like knight e2, knight f1. Either knight g3 or g4, knight g3, king g2, easy game. Uh, okay, where's my main line? I wanted to show you. Okay, here it is, a6. So a6 is the so-called main line, old, old main line, with the intention to hide the bishop to a7. And about a4. Yeah, a4 is the modern move, one of the modern moves. And the idea is, uh, at the same time, um, uh, uh, solve this problem of knight a5, and also fighting for space advantage at, uh, the, queen, uh, at the queen side. But also one of the funny um, differences of this line is sometimes the pawn on d3 becomes uh, defended. So I'll try to remember this line. I think it was something like uh, h, okay, let's put bishop a7 here, short castle here, and I'm trying to remember. So the idea, so the idea is maybe, maybe it's not here. <laughs> maybe it's not here. So the idea is about knight h5. And with the bishop on b3, there might be an okay. Yeah, I think it was with the rook on f1. Okay, maybe I'll just make some random move. Instead of rook e1, I'll just play here, here, and here. Okay, this will work, this will work better. And now after knight h5, this is one of the classical ideas from black. Black wants to play queen f6, knight f4, something like queen g6, and immediately go very aggressive. And this is where knight e5, I think so it works, should, should be working here. And the purpose is that queen h5 is targeting the knight, so knight e5, queen h5, very important to having h3 included so that there's no bishop g4 and you say the queen goodbye. But also the bishop on c4 is protecting the pawn. So that's also one of the reasons why this um, um, a4 is a better choice uh, then the old, the old response uh, here, bishop b3. Although you can still play this. I occasionally play it myself online. Here, here, knight b2, knight f1, knight g3, h3, and just a very quiet game. But I, I think a4 is more aggressive, more to the point. And after bishop a7, um, probably I'm going to mention this uh, from, other f from another file. There are... Uh, I would say two plans, uh, two plans for white. Probably there's more than that, but I'm relating to the knight's jump. And when the knight is jumping, it's either knight bd2, rook e1, knight f1, either h3 or without h3. Again, I'm trying to save some tempos if possible and play knight g3. And the second plan is knight a3. You might have seen some high level games so the idea of knight a3 is to play knight c2, play bishop e3, trade the bishops, position the knight on e3, and fight for the space advantage at the queen side. So that's a slightly different game. I think I have a game uh, like that prepared for the webinar. Let me just show you this line. So rook e1 here, h3. Again, about h3, I think the reason why h3 here is played, because after knight e2, you have to be aware of this idea. After knight g4, what was the line again? I think it was rook e2, king h8, h3, f5. So this idea is extremely important to know, unless I'm, again, I'm mixing up some, some lines big time. And um, it's extremely dangerous to take this piece. At least the idea. Maybe here exactly, again, I managed to mix it up. And uh, either it's g3 or queen h4. I already don't remember. 
Yeah. So it's extremely dangerous. This bishop on a7 is very powerful. And uh, after f5 takes, there was a very high level game uh, between grandmasters played in Riga Technical University Open back in, I don't remember, maybe 2016. Jan Schroeder was playing this game with black. I remember it still. I think he was the first one to execute it. And the line was something like knight h6, g4, and maybe it was a sacrifice. Yeah, knight f5 and bishop f5. A very dangerous attack. So this is from the black's perspective already. So uh, this is something what you don't want to miss. So if you're playing knight e2 after knight g4, obviously you already cannot play d4. So this is why, again, you need to watch out for this knight g4 and be ready to play d4. So if knight g4 is a problem and you recognize this idea of uh, uh, knight e2, knight g4, uh, whatever, rook e2, king h8, so this is somebody who really knows his stuff, what he's doing there. So he'll, he'll probably start with h3. So h3, um, not so sure really if here knight h5 is possible. I think it is possible. So knight h5, knight e5 is queen h4. Yeah, and there's something hanging here. So that's the difference why the rook is not on f1, but on e1. So maybe this is already not exactly the most precise order in the move. So maybe more precise is to play h3, short castle, knight b2. So knight h5 is still not possible. And uh, finally, not finally, but I want to move on so that bishop e6 is probably something you're going to see quite often in Italian games. And I think the only way how you can try to fight for the advantage is take here. And if you would check the top level games uh, between highest level grandmasters, you'll notice nobody is playing like that. And the reason is that, that they have probably came to understand that these double pawns, they're going to be internal weakness forever. And the F file doesn't really contribute anything for black. It seems ridiculous. Yeah, I have knight h5, knight f4. I can try to make a big attack there. I have a very powerful bishop on a7. But still, if you would switch on the engine, engine says 0 0.3, 0 0.4 advantage for white in typical positions. And white is just fighting for a space advantage at the, at the queen side. Right. So a top professional, normally, in these kinds of positions, is playing rook e8. Rook e8 with the idea to play bishop e6, takes and take with the rook. And this is considered to be top stuff. So they are trying not to double these pawns on e6, and they're trying to keep the pawn structure healthy. So that is the general idea. So after rook e1, okay, let's try this again. Knight bd2, short castle h3. Uh, bishop e6, we are happy to take, take and fight for the space advantage. So... I think I'll have a file about that shortly. And typically the ideas uh, here for white involve at some moment pushing b5. So imagine something like, I don't know, I'm gonna fantasize now a little, something like queen e8, I could play probably knight c4, something like knight h5. Rook a2 is generally a good move because I can play b5 takes, takes, I don't have to worry about bishop takes on f2. And as soon as the uh, a file is going to open, I'm going to fight for the a file by immediately doubling the rooks. Which actually reminds me, I was having a game against another leading, leading Latvian grandmaster, Nikita Meshkov, some years ago. He was my student for many years, and I tricked him by playing a slightly different order than most. And this is, again, one of the things which I really like about... Uh, oh, just a second. This is not the game. This is the game. Okay, sorry about that. I have two games against Nikita. We have played so many times against each other. And I tricked him with d3, knight of six, and I tried knight c3. I know this is an old move, supposedly not dangerous. And again, my opponent has to figure out, can he really play short castle? Because this allows bishop g5, h6, bishop g4, h4, g5. Although with a bishop on c5 ready to turn to e7, probably this is possible. So if he would play something like short castle, I could play, let's say, h3. I'm still waiting for h6. I'm sorry, for d6 to happen because I might play bishop g5. And now show me somebody who is ready to play this. This is extremely risky. So there's 95 thread, there's queen f3, long castle, not easy. So this is why he played in the game um, after knight c3, h6. I played 
here, here, he was trying to set up a normal looking position. So the idea was for me to play knight a4, use the same idea to capture this bishop, and after bishop b6, takes takes something like a3. So I was improvising right there, and what I managed to do is get exactly the same setup. So I'm fighting for the space advantage at the queen side. Takes, takes, bishop e6, here, here. And I think this is pretty much a dream position for white. And um, I managed to gain a considerable space advantage at the queen side. So rook a2 is a classical idea. But normally the idea is to push b5, draw away the knight and play d4. So this is why he played queen e8, so that the queen on b5 is targeting the pawn on b5. I don't know, maybe I could have improved the game because b5 and d4 followed after that is the classical idea. Yeah, I played queen e2. Again, queen e2, the idea is to play b5 takes, takes d4 and the queen is protecting the pawn on b5. So queen h5, uh, here, 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 here. Yeah, I don't remember why I didn't play d4. Maybe there was something specific about this. Yeah, maybe something like knight g6 and I didn't like what's happening there. Yeah, so I play bishop e3, takes, takes, and I have an open a file. Easy game. There is no attack for black. So black is just slightly worse. Engine says this is okay, but he was suffering for most of the game, but managed to make a draw. Okay, let me um, uh, move on and show you some other, uh, other ideas as well, because if I'm gonna talk um, everything I wanted to mention very quickly. I'm just going to return to the ideas. Uh, so e4, e5, here, here, bishop c4, um, knight f6. Yeah, okay, knight f6 is not necessary. I could have started with bishop c5 as well. So knight f6, d3, and bishop c5. Uh, I, would, I would advise you here to play it uh, pay a close attention the order of the moves your opponent is developing its pieces. Because if he hasn't played d6 yet, he might play d5. So d5, d7, d5 is one of the most aggressive responses here for black. And uh, bishop g5, again, I'm not so sure. So bishop g5, what's happening? I think black can play h6 here, and g5 feels safe. It feels safe because knight g5 is impossible because bishop always gonna return back. And after bishop g3, d6, I would love to strike in the center, but I don't think I'm ready. And one of the most annoying ideas for black is king h8 and knight h7, as far as I'm concerned, to push h5, h4. There was this uh, very nice game between Igor Kovalenko against Amin Basem. Amin Basem is also a uh, very nice uh, guy and, and uh, a uh, big friend of uh, Vasa, uh, so one of the top leader, uh, top players, uh, top player from Africa, and he played uh, this game against Igor in which Olympiad was it? I don't remember. 2016, it might have been. So that was a game of high theoretical value, and uh, so you can check it out. Uh, so I'm not going to advise that. I'm going to advise C3. So about C3. When you're playing c3, you're ready to allow black to play d5. You don't mind d5. There is one anti-move specifically for d5. If you're concerned about that, you can play rook e1. Rook e1 specifically is against d5. And again, d5 doesn't work. For the same reasons, which I already mentioned very big, in the very beginning, there is no bishop f2. Yeah. So knight e5, rook e5, there is no bishop f2 because there's always going to be um, what is the best move? Check here, here, and queen of three. Yeah, don't miss, of course, uh, check g3, uh, queen d4, or king g1, queen d4. You don't want to miss that, but king f1, uh, black is in trouble, big trouble. So black cannot do that, but there's a number of moves. So black can play still knight g4, rook e2, either knight d4, already don't remember, something like takes, takes, here, here, c3, just a seemingly normal Italian, and black is not playing d5. But normally the game progresses something like this. Black plays something like um, uh, d6, a6, or a5, and we are just playing normal Italian game. So rook e1 is an anti-d5 setup, if you're interested in that. In my uh, PGN file, I'm not so sure I've mentioned it. Uh, maybe not, yeah, I don't remember it. But maybe somebody from the camp, they're gonna mention this move. 
Um, yeah, so we are going to allow this uh, D5 because I don't think it's a dangerous move. You should be happy that black is playing so aggressively. It's also helping you to achieve better results. Takes, takes. And uh, here, again, the modern theory is A4. Unless something has dramatically changed in the past years, the old move is rook E1. But although rook E1 is still quite popular at the correspondence level, at least it used to be uh, something like a year ago when I last checked this line. So I don't know, maybe something has changed in the last year. So rook E1, the idea is to challenge the pawn immediately. And F6, again, is bad because of... Um, I don't remember, to be honest. Ah, oh, just a second. Rook E1. I think I already jumped slightly forward. Rook E1, F6. So maybe it was D4. And you cannot really take because there's going to be something hanging here. I think so, at least. So, so this idea of uh, making a voluntarily this um, pin, it, it's a very risky idea. Although f6 is the traditional idea for black, although only after king h8. So after rook e1, the old move, bishop g4, uh, what is the move here? I think it was h3, bishop h5, knight b2, knight e4, knight g3 is uh, typically how uh, white is playing. But I'm going to advise a4. And a4 is um, uh, the popular mode, the modern move, but the idea to play b4. b4, bishop, b6, a5, we capture the bishop. And uh, after a4, there's a number of, um, there's number of moves. I'll try to remember them now. So a5 probably feels to be more secure. And we are still playing rook e1, here, here, knight bd2, threatening to play knight e4, h3, knight g3, get rid of the bishop uh, so that we can target the pawn on e5, knight b6, here, here, here. Again, uh, threatening with, uh, with the idea to play knight g3. And somehow white is uh, remaining ahead, slightly, slight advantage for, for white. So this a5 is um, to my knowledge, I don't think it's the main move, but it is a possibility. There's another option to play bishop g4. Ah, oh, just a second. I think it was... Let me... Uh, this Leech's study is a bit confusing. Ah, okay. It was bishop f5. A bishop f5. Now, this is quite tricky stuff. So, bishop f5 is... At least it used to be quite popular at the, uh, topest, uh, at the highest level. Uh, black is immediately targeting the pawn on d3, but after knight bd2, black has to play knight b6, otherwise why did you play bishop f5? Again, I want to play probably knight e4. I think there was another line. Uh, knight f6, queen e2, black plays something like... Uh, I don't remember. h6, knight e4, knight e4, d takes, and and white is slightly pushing this position because of the um, a little space advantage at the queen side with b4. So black plays after uh, bishop f5, knight b2, knight b6, here, here, seemingly a blunder. But after rook e1, it's so easy for black to make a mistake because knight b3 is already a nice trick. You're threatening to win the bishop here or here. So he is forced to give away a pawn like this. Here, here, here. And this, this line was tested at the highest level. And black is somehow holding, but I imagine it's not fun. So white is enjoying a two bishop advantage. I think this, um, yeah, this line is included in the PGN basic information in this basic PGN file I've made for you. So you can check it out. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, the most popular move is a6. Yeah, a6 with the idea to not allow b4 because I can just play bishop b6. And again, you're playing knight bd2. Typically, something like bishop g4 is going to be met by h3, knight e4. And white is fighting for space advantage at the queen side. So this a4, a5 very often in many Italian setups is going to be extremely important. Right. 
so yeah so you're playing a a4 just a second yeah d5 takes takes a4 um you're thinking about the space advantage for example black might play let's say i'll try to show you one of the typical lines a6 knight bd2 um not so sure if Ah, yeah, knight b6 is a possibility. Yeah, this I, I have to mention. Knight b6 is a very, very uh, risky move because black is targeting the bishop. And again, you do, don't want to give it up. So you are sacrificing the pawn. So bishop on a2 is a common sacrifice. And accepting this pawn seems to be mandatory because the question is why did black actually play knight, uh, knight to b6? Because white might just continue to play b4, a5, fight for the space advantage. So queen d3. A5, again, you cannot take because of bishop, uh, I think bishop b1, the knight is hanging. So he has to go away, here, here, and this is an extremely dangerous attack. So obviously h takes is impossible because there's a mate on h7 hanging and black is somehow, somehow holding this, but the engine of course loves white. So white is having a very, very uh, good initiative here and there have been some games in this line as well. Right, uh, let me move forward. Otherwise, I'm gonna talk, talk too much about this. So in general, like I mentioned, C3, D5 is not dangerous. It's very aggressive. You just have to get used uh, to play these types of positions. And actually, again, this is gonna be the second game against Nikita, which I played, which was very similar in a similar fashion. So allow this D5 to happen. So we played some sort of a quiet Italian. As you can see, again, I was employing the same idea of uh, not castling first. I tried to move the knight to g3 first. Uh, so the idea in general is that after the short castle, the rook is already standing in an f file. So something like after, uh, I don't know, maybe king h1. Um, Knight h2, I can play immediately f4. So the rook is for the f pawn advancement, better placed on, on the f file. I managed to save a tempo. So he played d5. And of course, I could have played something like queen e2, a normal Italian opening. If he takes, I take with the d pawn. I'm thinking about some potential ideas of knight h4, queen f3, knight f5, and try to advance on the king side. But after d5, I voluntarily took on d5 because I wanted to have this counterplay against e5 pawn. So this is a weak pawn on d3, but white is easily compensated by the piece activity. And because of the pawn on h6, black cannot easily play f6, protect this pawn, because with the pawn on h7, f6 would be a traditional idea. Let's say king h8, f6, bishop e6. Black is super solid, super solid and probably at some point can even take over. With the pawn on h6, f6 is creating a lot of weaknesses of, at the white squares. So this is why, he, of course, he didn't play it. He's too good for that. And after rook e1, he employed this trick, bishop e6, indirectly defending the pawn on e5. So knight e5, rook e5, falls under bishop f2. King f2, queen f6. And now you can see the difference. This knight on d5 is not protected. So it doesn't work. So I cannot take the pawn on e5. So I played bishop c2, which is not a good move. Something like bishop d2 probably was more tricky. And it's always quite interesting because you can try to organize some unpleasant uh, tactical ideas at the king's side. For example, something like queen c1. And it is black who has to figure out if there's something uh, threatening. So what I did, I played bishop c2. Queen d6. Uh, for black, it's ex extremely difficult to make a move here. So queen d6, knight h4, and uh, he made a mistake after knight e7, queen h5, suddenly all of the white's pieces are joining the attack. And after d4, e takes, there's knight f5, and black loses because there's a pin on the e file. So the best response here for black was instead of the queen d6 i think play something ultra solid rook d8 cannot be a mistake after knight f5 looks dangerous takes takes queen f6 black cannot be worse i mean he cannot be worse because if white wants to play d4 this is going to be a pawn sacrifice 
All right, uh, let's go back to the uh, classical Italian ideas. And uh, I'm mentioning a couple of times that uh, there's this old line. So this is the old line. So where's the modern line? Um, yeah, so this should be uh, C4, C5, C3. Again, short castle might be more precise, but again, C3 comes with this idea to early transfer the knight to F1 and G3. And again, short castle, we are probably already quite happy to allow D5. So this is just a slightly uh, different order of the moves. So it really depends against which opponent you are playing. And you have to understand his playing stuff. For example, you're playing extremely ag aggressive player who is feeling very good in sharp dynamic games. Probably you don't want to play in his territory and you want to force him to play something more solid. Okay, so D6. Again, black is threatening with knight A5. Uh, just a second, not yet, because there's a check, of course. Yeah, there's a check. So H6, rookie one. Uh, there is a very easy way for black to mix it up. So, for example, a common mistake is black is playing a6, short castle, and short castle. Trying to be smart because I want to keep the option to play d5 available. I want to stop bishop g5 from happening because I have bishop e7 and whatnot. But there is a major problem, which is d4. Yeah, so black wasn't keeping an eye on that. And after e takes... Uh, not sure what is more precise, is it taking immediately or e5 again? So this d5 already feels like a big concession because I can just take, 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 and this is exposed king. Maybe I can just play immediately. Uh, yeah, probably just immediately take and uh, then just play e5. So black is just, yeah, c takes is more precise than e5 and black is in big trouble. So this mistake has been played before. So black needs to be aware of this. So d6, short castle, and again, black plays h6. This is the careful move, not to allow any businesses with bishop g5. I play it myself like that. After rook e1, short castle, and the modern theory has developed so far that black has understood. There is no reason for black to hide with the bishop on a7, since white is not really threatening with d4. So for example, if I would... Um, if I would here rush with d4, d4, I just played bishop b6. You're not ready. You're not ready for the action. I know it's very tempting to play d4 because, for example, d takes meets typical knight g4 or, or maybe just, yeah, just maybe just take on e5. That's real, not really a big deal. So this pawn on f2 is under attack. And let's say if you're protecting this pawn on e3 somehow, I don't know, I mean, how... Um, yeah, since bishop g4 is a problem, this pawn on d4 is contested. After h3, you are just going to run into knight e4. And knight e4 is a classical idea. Everybody knows this. So rook e4, d5, and black is just bare. I mean, what is this? I mean, all the pieces are sleeping there. So you, you want to be extremely careful when you're executing d4. So there must be something very good for you if you're going to play d4 after wasting the tempo. But again, like I mentioned, since you play d3, it doesn't mean you don't want to play d4. You're just willing to postpone it at a later time. Um, yeah, so here knight b2 is the main move. And now comes the big move, a5. And a5 is a hyper-modern move, uh, which has seen uh, the games at the highest level. I don't remember which was the year when, when it was introduced at the highest level. So the idea is... Black wants to play bishop e6. He's already happy to trade the bishops. Why is he not doing this immediately? Because after bishop e6, we are going to trade, and we are going to get a space advantage. Now, this is an excellent position. So something like a6 or a5, I don't know what is better, maybe a5, just b5 here. And either d4 or knight c4, d4, and white is enjoying an excellent position. He is having a space advantage. This bishop is terrible. So that is the reason, that is the reason why modern chess, <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about modern chess in general, not about modern chess, the company. Uh, so that's why modern chess and players have understood that A5 is the most challenging approach, fighting for the space advantage at the queen side. And uh, here there are two number of, uh, two main moves for white. Again, I don't know them at such a great depth, which is really bare, which is really bare. Is it h3 
or is it uh, not F1? But there is one major difference. Um, H3, I think it was, uh, yeah, H3 allows a very spectacular sacrifice. After bishop e6, you don't want to take because this is already a concession for you. I mean, where's your game at the queen side? Where's your space advantage? What are you going to do there? Because normally I was recommending to play b4, a4, a5. So black is going to play instead b5, queen b8, another queen b6, something like that. So your only chance is to push d4, which is not necessarily guaranteeing you a good game. So that's the reason why bishop b5 became increasingly popular. So the threat is to play at the right time. Bishop takes on c6 and d4. Not always it works, but that's the general idea. So here black plays queen b8. So this is the shocking move. So the queen is improved to a7 because it's not doing anything on b8. And after queen b8, let's say white is taking, this queen is already getting an open file. So knight f1, uh, queen a7, and now there is a big theory. Uh, there is a very big theory. I don't know what exactly is the current status of that. Maybe in the camp you'll learn that. There's d4, e takes, and bishop c6. And there are some high level games, a piece sacrifice after d takes on c3. Uh, what was the line again? Something like bishop a4. I think it was uh, World Cup, who was a dingle run against Kirill Aksenko, I think. I'm just saying this from the memory, who played this in, back in 2017, I think. And it's a very, very sharp line, and the engine really likes black. But Alexenko was playing with white. Okay, I think so. Okay, hope I'm not mistaken. So after queen a7, there is a more peaceful move. There's a rook e2 move, there's a bishop e3 move. But in general, black is just playing very active. Something like a4, maybe even queen a5, and um, something like, let's say, bishop e3, takes, takes, a4. Taking away the retreat square for the bishop on queen a5 is this bishop is challenged. So bishop c6 takes, black is always enjoying a good game here. So that is the general idea. But a more peaceful approach for you is um, knight f1. So after knight f1, you're keeping this option available to play d4, avoiding these crazy sacrifices. And after bishop e6, bishop b5, uh, now queen b8 is a big mistake. <laughs> yeah, queen b8, d4 just drops a piece. Or a material at least, there's still bishop b4 in then, but drops material. So after bishop b5, knight e7, uh, d4, and yeah, there's a number of moves. Uh, there's the boring move, bishop g6, uh, bishop b6, here, here, Again, h3 is quite important not to allow any pressure against the pawn on d4. c6, here, here, bishop e3. The threat to play queen e2 and sacrifice on h6. Or something like knight f5 might be included at some moment. This is extremely unpleasant for black. But the more interesting approach is to take e takes on d4. After e takes, c takes, bishop b6, knight g3, black has the extremely powerful move d5. D5, E5, Knight E4. Um, so the idea is after Knight E4, D takes Rook E4. Again, please excuse my memory. I don't remember what was more precise. Was it Queen D5 immediately or C5? Yeah, so the idea is that Black is having enough activity to gain back the pawn. But I'm sure this line can be improved. For example, I very briefly checked. After knight g3, d5, e5, knight e4, white just can play bishop d3. So bishop d3 not taking this uh, pawn on e4, the so-called Greek gift. And after knight g3, h takes, white is just enjoying some space advantage. So bishop e3 here, and rook c1. And typically, as I believe, the pawn chain uh, shows you the direction you should play. So the pawn chain shows like this, d4, e5. That means you have to play at the king set. Uh, I played this once against recently against Amin Basen. Again, we were playing in a, a Swedish Battle League tournament. 
at Leeches. I don't remember how the game ended, but we are playing exactly the same line. I think more than once, actually. So, <laughs> so that that was quite uh, highly contested. So A5 is like recognition. I mean, you're you're playing a highly modern and topical line, and you know what you're doing here. Of course, there's um, um, other possibilities for White. Uh, nobody is stopping really White from playing a positional move. Like um, I think there was. Uh, just a second. No, I think there was h3, a5, and even bishop b3. Yeah, this is quite a tricky move. So-called old move. Yeah. Rook e8, knight bd2, bishop e6, and bishop a4. Like this. And at the right time to play d4. So it's all about maneuvering. <laughs> I have I have all of this information in the file I've provided for this webinar. You can, of course, uh, check it out. So this is extremely popular line. Again, things change all the time. So right now it's extremely popular. Maybe after a couple of years, it's going to be obsolete. All right. Uh, yeah. The next, the next plan I would like to show you is the so-called Hungarian line. So what is Hungarian line? It's still Italian game. A3, E4, E5, knight of three, knight C6, bishop C4, knight of six, um, and D3. So if black plays typically knight of six, it doesn't mean it means he is not afraid of knight G5, D5 ideas. But here comes the bishop E7, and bishop E7 is extremely solid, but in my eyes also slightly passive. And um, black is just willing to play. Short castle, and the, and then it really depends how White is playing this. Maybe d5, but most of the occasions still d6. So short castle, short castle, and rook e1. Rook e1 is specifically meant against d5. So if you're gonna be oblivious, you don't know what's happening here, and you play something normal looking, knight bd2. Where's the difference? So for example, here, here, and knight bd2. Because everybody plays knight b2 in Italian opening, you're gonna get d5. Takes knight e5, rook e1, and probably it's already possible to f6. I'm not so sure, really. Yeah, I'm not so sure. So this this idea of um, rook e1 is specifically targeted against d5. And again, d5 more than uh, because of the bishop is not standing on c5. There is no ideas to attack on f2. So rook e1, d6, and now yet again, black is threatening to play knight a5, threatening the bishop. You could play a3, but why don't you want to take the space advantage immediately? So you're again playing a4, gain the space advantage. And there's a number of moves. Yeah, there's a lot of moves. I've mentioned um, most of them in this uh, basic PGN file, but uh, there's a king h8, knight g8, the five idea, there's the same idea of with h6, knight h7, king h, then f5 idea, and then there's knight a5. So let me show you this idea with knight a5. Knight a5, of course, we don't want to trade c5 and knight a3. So knight a3, the idea is you want to prepare c3, b4. Not necessarily c3, d4, but b4. So for example, something like bishop e6, uh, this was my game. I managed to beat a very, play a very nice game against Emil Schmidek from Germany in 2019, rank open. He played h6 here, here. Seemingly a normal setup, especially for those who are playing Ray Lopez, preparing b4. h3, seemingly a good move. Yeah, queen e1, I was just improvising. So here the question is, if uh, if uh, black can really prepare d5. Yeah, but d5, the pawn is under attack. It's not really so easy to do. So my opponent essentially lost the control. After knight e3, uh, the idea was forced to play d5, takes, takes, and then go back. <laughs> or, or was it knight g4? I already don't, I think it was knight g4. Yeah, yeah, knight g4, f6, d4. Yeah, this was the idea. And again, because of the pawn on h6, the queen is activated. And bishop b1 after that is incoming. And I thought this is fun. And again, during the game, my opponent didn't understand. Can he do this or not? Of course, he saw that. 
And he played slot the pass of b6. Again, we are happy to trade. We already, already recognize the idea from uh, the pawn structures, which you'll probably get in the camp, that these double pawns in Italian opening are typically more uh, annoyance for black than an actual gain of these squares, because black is also not getting any activity, any possibility to play actively in the center. Because of these double pawns, they become a weakness. So after knight e3, b6, took here, rook e6, and knight e5 now is annoyance. You cannot take, so b4, fighting for space advantage, and eventually I managed to get a very nice game, and this is a weakness. Okay, I'm not gonna show you that uh, from this moment, but um, all in all, it was a good game. Uh, let me go back to the Hungarian line. Shot castle, shot castle, rook e1, here, here. So for example, something like, um, what was the trickiest line here? I think it was king h8. And one of the common, common mistakes, I think I've seen this, and maybe I've made myself in some blitz games. I think this was a mistake. C3, uh, knight g8, d4. It's super tempting. I mean, why don't you want to play like that? But there was something wrong about this after f5. Someday, please correct if I'm wrong. And the point is, um, after take, 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 I think it was this. Yeah, rook f3 and queen f3 is impossible because of d5. I think so. I think so. Maybe I'm mistaken. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, where did I, where did I jump? Um, okay, so king h8, h, so this is why we're playing h3, waiting for knight to show where is, where is it gonna go? Because now after knight g8, we leave this option to play knight c3, f5, and knight d5, with the idea to fight for the center, and space advantage again at the center, and the, and the queen side. So this is why black is playing extremely tricky. He first played king h8, then he plays h6. Now you are again waiting for black to play either knight h7 or knight g8 so that you can play knight c3. You are playing a5, fighting for space advantage, and only after a6, knight c3, knight, I think it was knight d5, but or maybe knight d5 also is possible, but, and again, in the end, somehow you're fighting for space advantage and you get some kind of, um, a king's in in position, typically with the idea after a five, take on a five. Okay, but that is a different topic. Um, before I move on to the game, uh, Daniel Dubov and his uh, exciting idea, which he found in this uh, uh, C3D for E takes B4, perhaps I should show you more some common ideas. Uh, I would like you to show for example, this knight a3 maneuver. Uh, this was, again, my game. I apologize. I'm showing my games. I just know them best. I uh, played a number of Italian games. Doesn't mean I'm the best player in Italian. Uh, this was my game against uh, Latvian international master Oleg Krivanosov, who is pretty much always very well prepared against Italian. So it's super, super hard to beat him. So it's always, for me, a great challenge to try to outplay him in a positional game. Um, yeah, so h6 is the secure move. A positional player, a careful player like Oleg, he's not going to allow any bishop g5 from bishop h4 ideas. Thus, h6 is completely normal for him. a4, a6. Now I want to show you slightly more this knight a3, which I didn't explain. So knight a3, the idea is to prepare knight c2. And bishop e3. So after short castle, I'm still waiting for my opponent to waste tempo on bishop a7. So after rook e1, I'm very happy to see knight g4 because of d4. I'm very happy to see bishop g4, bishop h5 go because I know the bishop is not doing there anything. And after bishop a7, knight c2, now I'm happy to play bishop e3. And again, you, you, you look at that, right? He's not playing bishop e6 because after bishop e6, he knows that this is worse. Takes takes and b4. So that's at least the traditional idea. And um, then something like bishop e3, knight e3, b5, d4. So that's a classical idea. So this is why he plays as the best players in the world because he's usually very well prepared. 
rookie eight, knight uh, bishop e3, and uh, there used to be a line, bishop e6, and I was hoping he's going to repeat this line. So the point again, bishop e6, again, he's not taking with the pawn because that is uh, removing him this possibility to play actively in the center with d5 because black plays rook e6 with intentions to play d5 later. I, I don't think I mentioned this. So rook e6 takes here d4, here, and now it's extremely important. There's this move. Rook e4, double take on e4 is impossible because of knight c6, uh, b takes queen d4 is a double attack to the knight and the rook. So this position is slightly worse for black. I think at the time I found an improvement with the move a5. There was Wesley So's game against, I don't remember, maybe he was white or black, I already don't remember that. And I found improvement and the idea was to play f3, c4, some sort of a Marozzi bind, and then continue with knight e3 and I can play against this slightly misplaced knight on f6. And a5 was important because if I play f3 immediately, black has a move a5. So after c4, there's some weaknesses. So that's the reason why I start with move a5. But he didn't play that. He was aware of that. So after bishop e3, he took immediately. That was not random. He knew this idea of bishop a7 and d4. He also had seen the game. And after bishop e6, take, take with the rook and b4. So this position is not pleasant for black. So before, again, I'm thinking about various ideas of queen b3, maybe knight e5, maybe b5, very easy. So where is black's game? So for black, something like d5, it's not really clear if he can do this. He can do this immediately because I could just play, for example, something like, um, um, I don't know, this rook is quite awkward. Maybe I can even play b5. Okay, maybe even queen c2. Now, queen c2 and d takes, d takes typically should be, should be great for black. For white, I apologize, because I can always play knight c4, pressure this pawn, and think about playing b5. So after b4, I managed to play that. Knight e7, a5, space advantage, knight g6, c4. Yeah, I got that advantage in the game. So it's already quite unpleasant, and any typical c6 ideas already are met with c5, d5, knight f5, and this is a problem. So something like d takes, d takes, this is a symmetrical position, but rook d1, knight d6, here, here, here maybe even, black is just suffering. Um, another setup I would want to show you, so very often uh, it's going to be, who is going to play um, d4 first or d5? So this is my game against um, uh, Lithuanian talent Paulius Poltinavičius, who is now a grandmaster, very good one. And uh, again, I'm playing against the youngster. The reason is because I can trick him. I can trick him with the order of the moves. I can trick him by playing an Italian game, which requires more understanding of positional ideas and typical maneuvers instead of hardcore theory of 20, 25 moves. So that's why uh, Italian uh, game is really one of my favorites. So he played d6. Again, this already tells me quite a lot because he's not gonna play d5. He wants maybe after short castle play knight a5. Still, it's not a threat because of bishop b5 check. So knight d2, a6, a4. Now knight a5 might, may have been a problem. So I play a4 immediately. Bishop a7 again tells me quite a lot. So he is ready to waste the tempo on that. So I played h3, show castle, here. And this maneuver of knight e7, knight g6 is extremely popular, but there's one little nuance. About this maneuver, it's extremely important if black can play d5. Because if he is late, if he doesn't play d5, he's simply worse. So d5 is critical for this move. And after bishop b3, rook e8, black is just fine. And he made just one slight mistake. He played rook e8. And the reason is that after seemingly normal looking move, bishop e6, 
he is again trying to spare a tempo on h6. Again, he's thinking the same as I am. Should I need this h6 or not? Should I try to get this position what I want without spending this tempo on this move? So after bishop e6, if white managed to play d4, he is always bare, always bare. So this position without a, uh, any any doubt is is just bare for white. Any, of course, e takes usually is answered by c takes, but there might be also an opportunity at summon to play uh, knight d4. So now he played h6. This is clearly already slightly worse for black. And I just want to show you how in this Italian game, I used an idea from the Rai Lopez. So after bishop e3 takes takes, queen c7, seemingly it looks okay. Why black should be worse here, right? Rook d1. Yeah, why b5? Because if rook d8, d takes is a problem. This bishop is out of the game. So d takes, bishop e3, e takes on f6, big problem. And uh, if he's going to take here, bishop d4, bishop d4, c takes, this is just worse. Yeah, white is just enjoying the center and it's, it's not super bad, but it's just worse, solidly worse. So, of course, he's not going to do that. He played b5 to protect the bishop. And I was thinking here for a very, very long time, how to make this an advantage for me. And I found this beautiful idea from the Ryle Lopez to play queen c2. And the idea was, if he had played rook d8, I wanted to play, uh, what was it, c4. Yeah, this was the idea from Ryle Lopez. Uh, c4 uh, to play maybe c5 later to imprison the bishop or fight against this weakness. And if he takes here, I make an intermezzo move. So for example, takes, takes, and queen c4. These are weaknesses. So that was my big idea. And um, I borrowed it from Raya Lopez. And why didn't I play immediately c4? Because there is um, knight e4. Yeah. Again, this knight e4 idea is um, quite important to know. Yeah, and he played d5, takes, 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 seemingly okay, but bishop d4. And e5, white is enjoying a space advantage, not a space advantage, but pawn majority um, uh, at the king's side. So this, this structure of um, 97 ig6, e6, and d5 is one of the most critical ones. Now I could show you the next game. Uh, I play this against uh, Maxim Rechtein, one of the leading uh, grandmasters from Israel. Again, Italian opening. Now, this time I played Short Castle because this was game in 2019. I think I was already quite aware that Short Castle is considered to be more precise. And I wasn't really toying with this idea of early knight bt2 and knight f1. So what I did, I played c3. And again, he went for this old line, this old line. And after a6, a4, bishop a7, rook e1, knight g4 is still impossible here, h3. 97. Okay, so now he goes for this line. So 97, 90 bt2, 90 g6. And the trick here, now this is quite tricky stuff. I don't think I'm in time to play an out of one, 90 g3, because essentially black is going to play c6 and d5. So you need to be ready for this, because I don't think you're going to be ready to play d4, what happened in my previous game against Poltinovich. So here it's very important to play d4. First, you are playing it first, despite the fact that you are behind in development. So something like um, e takes, oh dear, I don't remember this one. Now that I'm looking at this position, why there was no d5? Because this is of course a very big, maybe I'm mixing up something. e takes, maybe it was with the knight. Yeah, maybe it was like that, okay, I don't remember. So this idea of e takes on d4, clarifying the situation in the center is uh, quite a topical idea. But he played c6 with intentions to play d5. And in these positions, it's quite important to keep the knight on d2 for as long as possible. So bishop f1 is yet another maneuver I would recommend you to remember. And the point is, after rook e8, the correct move here is d takes, d takes, queen c2. And you, you want to play a5, you want to play knight c4, you want to play something like perhaps bishop e3 and fight for this uh, outpost on b6 and just enjoy very nice uh, positional game. Instead, I mixed up. I mixed up in the game. So I played 
I play queen c2. I thought, what's the difference? I'm just going to keep the tension here. I mean, I don't want to clarify the situation immediately, and I got to d5. So that was the difference. So he, he could strike immediately in the center. He didn't waste time on h6. He tricked me. And after takes, there's intermezzo move on d4. And I was looking for a position where I can force him to play a position with the isolated queen spawn. <laughs> Instead, he, he forced me into a position with an isolated queen spawn position. So it's an equal position, but still quite unpleasant. I managed to make a draw. Right. Um, uh, just a second. Um, at this game, not sure if that is really necessary. Uh, from the Italian, let me think. Before I move on to the Dubov against Karyakin, if I... Ah, yeah, yeah. One of the most popular ideas in Italian opening is sometimes black is wasting time on a6 and then he plays a5. For example, knight of six here. Ah, just a second. I think it was. I think it was here. Okay. So e4, e5. We're just, just developing normally a6, seemingly old move. And after a4, I'm not sure if it was it immediately. Black plays a5. So this idea has become increasingly popular lately. Maybe I'm mixing up again the order moves because those positions are so similar. Black is not allowing um, this bishop easily to escape. So the idea is to play, uh, again, bishop e6 and not allow for white to fight for uh, space advantage. That was a very nice game. I think I, I did this for another modern chess webinar. Carlsen's games, best games. I think so. It was Magnus Carlsen against Wesley. So, I mean, one of them. And they played this highly topical line, which involved also A4, A5. Okay, maybe I'm just mixing up. So I just wanted to mention this, that um, this is the traditional idea. And again, you're quietly playing either bishop B3 or A4. A4 is more... Um, challenging move. You're playing rook e1, knight bd2, thinking about d4, if you're seeing c6, knight e7, knight g6, because you need to watch out from this uh, d5 move, you're always thinking, can I save tempos on h3? So ideally, for example, this was, uh, I think this was yet another my game against Lawrence Trent, uh, who is more known as a, a chess commentator. And again, in this game, I was um, trying to save tempos. And uh, it's so difficult, again, to prepare against this because try to prepare this at chess base, quite impossible. So again, my opponent tells me quite a lot. He plays d6. So this means most likely he won't play d5. He could have played more tricky, short castle. And knight f1 is not so good already because he can already play d5, right? So with the knight on... Not on the phone, this feels like we awkward. I mean, doesn't mean it's not playable, just slightly awkward. And he told me quite a lot with move d6, knight a5 might be a problem. So bishop b3, could have played a4. Yeah, but I was in the mode of uh, bishop b3. Here, knight f1. Here, 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 here. So I managed to save a tempo on uh, h3. So bishop e6. And I tried immediately d4. So d4, I'm not so sure about this move. If uh, this is such a great idea without preparing h3 because it runs into bishop g4, and which is which is what he played. Although typically after e takes, c takes, black plays d5, e5, knight e4, and then again tries to break through in the center and has a quite strong pressure against the d4 pawn. Okay, probably already forgot to mention you, mention you all of the ideas, but again, otherwise, if I'll tell you everything about Italian opening, Italian game in one and a half hours, uh, there's nothing to do in the camp, right? Um, yeah, and finally is this uh, game of uh, Daniel Dubov against Sergei Karyak, and this is an extremely interesting line I would recommend for you to study, or perhaps include in your um, opening repertoire. So bishop, uh, bishop uh, c4, bishop c5, c3, knight of six. I already mentioned to you, right, 
that d4 e takes e5, black plays d5, and this is bad. This I mentioned to you, right? Because there's d takes, uh, what was it? Check here, 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 bishop g5. I think it was like this. This is not good. What Dubov did against Karyakin, the minister of defense, he played d4, e takes, and b4. <laughs> and this is not random. This is a big preparation. I just want to show you a couple of ideas. So Karyakin played bishop b6. And after bishop b6, white can play now e5. So there's a major difference. So the move d5 allows take, give a check. And there is such a move as b5, which was not there before. So how do you respond? So the knight is under attack. Um, you want to play knight a5. The normal move, if you're not prepared, takes, takes, and just take. And apparently, uh, this position is extremely difficult to play for black because bishop d4 is just bad, takes bishop b2. This pawn is super powerful. The knight on a5 is out of the game. So after queen d7, d5, knight c3, and bishop b2, and the pawn on g7 remains. So that's quite an amazing, quite an amazing idea. Uh, rook g7 loses to queen e5. Here, and here, here, and here. <laughs> that's it. That's a victory in 19 moves. So 95 is already killing the game. So that's one of the sample lines. For example, after um, a b5, b5, knight a5 takes, here c takes, queen f6 is against the bishop b2, here, plays anyway, g3, and here black has to pick up and understand that after queen g4, that this is a draw. <laughs> and after d5, that's an obvious pin. There's nothing better, really. So again, this is forced. Queen f6, bishop g2, queen g7, g3, um, queen g4, here, castle, here. This is draw. <laughs> After knight e2, rook e6. Somehow the position fizzles out to a draw because black regains the material. I'm pretty sure Dubov knew all of this. Anyway, so he's, he's not really risking and backed by some serious analysis, you can find some, ex play some exciting games. I had this in the PGM file. So instead, I found an yet another amazing move after, after the same follow-up. Uh, bishop b6, e5, d5, takes, takes, check here, b5, yeah, I'm not before. <laughs> Uh, so that that that's what didn't happen in the game. Knight b4, here, takes, and there's going to be a funny line. This is all forced, all all forced. So a4, here, 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 here. This is a draw. <laughs> uh, some kind of a draw. I mean, just some perpetual check. Uh, Okay, quite ridiculous, but you can you can back it up with some analysis. And for example, Dubov being such a creative player, I'm sure he knew much, much more than what I'm showing to you. This crazy night before, definitely he was ready for that. But it's so difficult to play for somebody who is not ready for this. And uh, so Karyakin didn't play this. You, you might think why Karyakin didn't find this because he's such a talented player. I mean, he saw all of this. He just wasn't sure what to make of this position. So after um, E5, there is a move knight e4, what was played by Kriakin. And now after bishop d5, takes, takes, here, here. Ah, just a second. Did this happen? Ah, yeah, this is, this is what happened in the game. Knight e7, castle, h6, bishop h4. And you might ask why Kriakin didn't play g5. Because g5, Dubov would have sacrificed the piece. And it's not clear how here he will untangle his pieces. The computer doesn't understand this. Try to analyze this at a greater depth. It will just say, I mean, black is completely paralyzed. There's no d6 because there's always going to be a rookie one. This knight is falling. And after g5, knight g5, knight f3, white just goes back. And after knight e7, it's the same story. White just plays some positional chess, like bishop f6, here and here, and just mates. Something like that. It's quite an amazing game. 
And uh, yeah, of, of course, all of you know this stunning queen g6, which happened uh, later. So I'm not going to show you that. Uh, so this idea is quite interesting. And I even included in the analysis uh, um, bishop e7, more human looking move, because this is still a novelty to be played. And after bishop e7, e5 is still good. There's no d5 because takes the bishop is under attack. And after knight e4, I believe Dubov's idea was still to play bishop d5. Ah, oh, just a second. No, 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 no. B5, yeah. B5 forced the knight to go here. Bishop d5. Takes, takes, and just play for activity. And this knight is completely out of the game. And it's very easy for black to misplay this. I'm just making you know, normal looking moves. D6. H6. And black is already busted. So it's not even clear where black made a mistake. So something like d takes, uh, I think it was, I don't remember, rook d1, knight e5 with a deadly attack. So you can, uh, you can check this out. Anyway, um, I think that was um, very, very quickly marching through everything I wanted to say about about the Italian game, I did not mention anything about pawn structures. This is something which you're gonna uh, learn in the um, in the camp, because I just told you just the basic in introductions uh, to the Italian game, typical ideas, what's modern, what's not. And uh, in the actual camp, you'll get an idea to learn much in-depth uh, analysis and understanding for world-class coaches. And hopefully you'll understand this uh, variation from both colors. Because I always believe it's quite important to study a line not for white, not for black. You always study as a whole because you might play the same line with black. And it's completely normal. Many people play the same line with white and black and it doesn't mean that you have to only know just what to do for white. You have to know everything also from Black's perspective. Okay, I think I'm quite happy to answer some questions. Maybe I missed something. Just a second, let me uh, let me check in the questions and answers. answers. Um, some good book about Italian Ah, uh, Italian, good book. Well, I know, like I mentioned, Boris Avro has written this database for modern chess with black about the book. I haven't read it in the book, <laughs> to be honest. Maybe, maybe in my childhood, really. I don't know the book. If you're happy with the book, I mean, maybe, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, you're, um, your coaches in the in the actual camp, they're going to explain you much more than that because they're much more prepared than I am. I'm just telling you from my experience what I've learned in the years. Uh, it probably depends if you trust the author. If you trust the author, it, the content should be good because most most of the authors, I mean, a vast majority of the authors, I believe, if not all of them, they care about their reputation, about the quality they're producing. So that's a reputation. New in chess? Yeah, probably new in chess. Uh, is, everything is good. How many different important middle game pawn structures? I don't think I have time for that uh, to be answered in, in, the, in something like a couple of minutes. You'll have a special topic about that in the camp, about the pawn structures, and you're going to co cover all of that. So I might write a database for modern chess about Italian game for white. I just... <laughs> Haven't found the time really. I mean, I need to invest something for that. Hungarian variation instead of C3, A4. Uh, I'll tell you honestly, I don't know the C3 line. So if you like it, I mean, but the point is just a second, very quickly. Um, so uh, knight of three, knight C6 here, knight of six, D3 here, castle, castle, rook E1, D6. So the, can you play C3? Of course you can play this. I mean, nobody's stopping you, but I'm just saying that A4 is more modern because you're stopping this knight A5 idea and you're keeping the idea of knight C3, knight E5. So you're waiting this knight to go away. 
knight h7, knight g, and then you want to play knight c3, knight d5. In general, that's the idea. So you can afford to make a quiet waiting move as h3. But is somebody stopping you to play c3? No, I mean, of course not. So see here, 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 you can still do this. Um, just a second, maybe there's, there's the chat. Oh, so, sorry. Um, a book by Herman Gruten, I don't know, different to move order in Triastis. Uh, there are many book order, uh, Aradia, Garg, many, many orders of the move. So this is why, like I explained, this is what makes Italian games so appealing, that you are basing your uh, way you're playing out Italian game by just understanding. This is one of those rare openings where you have to understand what you're doing. You just cannot copy paste everything from a, a book and just, just apply. You have to understand the principles. And if you don't understand them, it's going to be very difficult. So the camp plays, uh, takes place next, next um, weekend. I'm not so sure if there is still the early bird discount of 10 euros. You have to check out the site. Probably Grigor will uh, tell you more about that. I didn't mention you a number of lines. I didn't mention, because I don't have the time for that. I didn't mention, for example, um, I didn't mention this line. It's extremely tricky. So you can ask your coaches in the, in the camp, for example, bishop c4, knight of six, d3, and h6. h6, d6, g6. h6, d6, h6, d6 g5. The tricky lines, you, you still need to know them and how to properly combat them. So I believe your coaches uh, will be uh, ready to answer that. Evans Gambit is good. Yeah, I'm actually surprised why Evans Gambit is not more popular than it is. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, so but the, about the Evans Gambit, uh, Black essentially needs to know a couple of moves. Just uh, one move, basically knight a5, uh, what was it? b4, bishop b4, c3, yeah, bishop e7 and knight a5. You ask every professional for black how to meet uh, Evans Gambit, they're going to say you the same knight, bishop e7, knight a5. <laughs> That's it. That's all you need to know about the Evans Gambit. Without a very huge preparation, black is already getting a normal game. But I mean, doesn't mean it's not playable. It is playable, very much so. Um, uh, just a second, browsing through the questions. Ah, Alexeyenko against Dingleren. Okay, 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 yeah. This was the game. I think it was from the World Cup. Um, a list of model games to find the database. This is something you're gonna ask, you're gonna have to ask your coaches. In the PGN file I've created for those who are gonna attend the camp, it's only the basic, uh, uh, the basic uh, uh, repertoire for white. It's not. It's not more than that. So those games I'm showing my games, they're not there. I mean, you, if you want, you can find them. <laughs> just base. I just didn't want really to advertise my own games. I just included them here so that I can properly explain my ideas. I could have used Carlson's games. Doesn't matter really. Maybe I should have. Um, If someone doesn't have a question, he can leave the meeting. Of course you can leave the meeting. <laughs> Nobody's stopping you. Hi again, uh, Arthurs. Yeah. I think that uh, more or less uh, you have uh, managed to, to answer all the questions. Uh, thank you for uh, the great lecture. Uh, I think that uh, you have covered very, very important ideas and move orders. It was uh, really a pleasure uh, to watch you. So uh, guys, uh, this was uh, the introduction. Uh, if uh, you have uh, some questions uh, concerning the camp, uh, I, I will be happy to answer now. Uh, in the camp, uh, you will also have uh, a lecture by Boris Avuch uh, featuring the modern theoretical trends, both for white and black. Uh, so uh, some of the questions, some of the theoretical questions that you uh, have asked uh, now can be um, answered by Boris. So uh, if you uh, don't have uh, specific questions, uh, 
we can end uh, the webinar. Of course, uh, you will get uh, an email uh, tomorrow morning. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, of course. I really appreciate that. <clears throat> and again, if you're gonna hear something uh, different from the coaches, just remember, this is my opinion. This is the way I treat the Italian game. Uh, I've came to uh, these understandings in over the years I've played Italian. And uh, I just hope you're going to find it useful. And uh, please visit the camp. Enjoy it and study hard. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, if you're uh, interested uh, in uh, the chess content uh, created by Arthur Snakesons, you will be very welcome to visit his uh, Twitch channel, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm also, can, also you streaming. Can write it, uh, you can uh, watch his streams. <laughs> yeah, I, I can, if you want. Yeah, sure. I, I can write it here in the chat. Of course, I appreciate you can uh, follow it as well. Um, that's my that's my Twitch channel. And uh, once a week, I'm doing master classes, the so-called boot camps, uh, which are later later uploaded to my YouTube channel. For example, this uh, Sunday, uh, 10 a.m. Central European time, I'll be doing a master class, the so-called boot camp about the famous king marches. King marches, uh, and all of you probably recognize the most famous game. Nigel Short against Jan Timan in 1991. But there's definitely more than that. There's, of course, again, Daniil Dubov <laughs> and his long castle and king walks. And there's other exciting examples. So uh, you can just visit me, my Twitch profile. There's the schedule. Everything's there. And appreciate that if you would also follow me. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. So, okay. uh, guys, uh, thank you for attending our lecture uh, tonight. Uh, have a nice time and all the best. We're we will be waiting for you at the camp. Okay, thank you. Take thank care. You. Bye bye. Goodbye.